weekend of the year in college football. No cocktails this weekend. Clear eyes. Joel Klatt on our show to Wednesday. This is going to be massive. What's up, even, man? Even the second-level games are great. How you doing? I remember a time when you would just, just bang on the franchises that hired defensive coaches. Remember that? I remember that, J-Mac. Remember that? That was yeah. years ago. Yeah, I'm sure it was. <laughs> I'm sure it was. They're occasional. Apparently now Aaron Rodgers is terrible and Robert Sala is the same. I like to Miko Ryans. We love we love that hire. You think Mike Vrabel's gonna fix the Jets? He's a man. Oh, okay. I like those kind of guys. Okay, so then what does USC need? They're fine. Oh, okay. Interesting. The flight got a little bumpy over Des Moines. Did it? <laughs> Did it? I'll get to that in a second. Okay, first of all, Ohio State, Oregon. Mm. So let's let's go. So Ohio State's got as good a talent as anybody in the country. Yeah. Even Texas. Oregon at home. If you've never been out there, you think, oh, it's got 50,000 seats. No, yeah. no. Loud. You have no idea. So you're going to be dealing. You're going to have multiple penalties with your offense can't hear. You're going to have four or five of those. Um, I think Ohio State's better but I don't know if they're better Saturday. I, th th well, I think that's fair. In, in particular, when you when you go on the road in these like supercharged environments, yeah. just think about these big matchups that we saw. Think about the environment in the first half for the Alabama Georgia game, and and how that carried you know Alabama uh, to that big lead, which then they they kind of held on for. The one thing that I think if if you're an Ohio State fan, you would take a little bit of of, of backing in is that. They're great at the line of scrimmage. Yeah. They owned Iowa at the line of scrimmage. And by the way, that's nothing to sneeze at. Iowa is a top 10 run defense. It's very rare that they give up 200 yards rushing and over five yards Iowa's per carry. Iowa's always got a good defense. Oh, man. Listen, listen this guy, he used to bang wow. on defensive coaches. He used to bang well, on can't, Iowa. Uh, Look their at punter's you. their best offensive player. But their goodness. defense is something else. Oh, my. You flip-flop more than Kamala. Anyways, <laughs> I will just tell you that this – this Ohio State offensive line, they can get after it, okay? I think that it was a question mark coming into the year, but they can run the football over 200 against Iowa, over five yards per carry. They've got this backfield that Chip knows how to work with, yeah. okay? Travion Henderson and Quinshawn Judkins. Yeah, backs. The reason I'm nervous for Oregon is because I've seen, even in that building, which I agree is a really difficult place to play, Colin... We saw Ashton Genty run for 195 yards on yeah. that Oregon defense in that building. Yeah. So, so the run game for Ohio State, how do you take a crowd out of it? How do, you, how do you minimize crowd noise effect? You beat them up physically. And that's, I think, what Ohio State's going to be trying to do, in particular early in that game, with, with a run game and an offensive line that I think is, is pretty elite. Okay, so a lot of people are pushing back an old Lincoln Riley, but Brett yeah. Venables is facing Texas this weekend yes. and could be humiliated. Well, their offense is terrible. So here's my take. Is, is Lincoln, because USC is so high profile and because he's a polarizing personality. After the, yeah, after the exit. Yeah. USC is going to be fine. It's a, the, the offense loses a running back in the center. They return the entire team as freshmen and sophomores on offense. Unproven kids. They'll be fine. Oklahoma's in big trouble, and I think Texas has a chance to just – this could get ugly. On paper, it could. I mean, the, the, I think the number is 14 and a half, which in this game is, is, is a big number because you would always assume that the game is going to be closer than what the, the teams actually are. I mean, even look at last year. I thought Texas was a much better team. Yeah. Oklahoma wins the game. Oklahoma's actually won five of the last six, I believe. Um, the, the concern for me is OU offensively is 121st in the country in total offense. 121st. That's not even near requisite enough against a Texas team that's really good on the defensive side, right? They're much better than they were even now, maybe not than defensive tackle, but the secondary is better. Their linebacker core is very good. This Colin Simmons guy, have you, yeah. have you seen this guy? He's no. a true freshman no. and he just plays on passing downs. He's like five sacks. So he can get after it, and and that's a precarious place to be for OU offensively, and they have been a nightmare offensively, by the way, all year. You think back, and they couldn't do anything against Houston. They didn't do anything against Tennessee. They had to have a defensive performance in order to beat Auburn. So, yeah, like, Texas is a much better team than Oklahoma. Yeah. And they're going to get Ewers back. They can run the football. They've got the best offensive line mm -hmm. in college football. They're veteran. They're old. I think – it's interesting, Colin, that you, like the last couple of years, you know what's rewarded in college football more than anything? Veteran talent. 
Not just talent. Used to be you just had to have five-star kids littered on your roster. That's fine. That's yeah. great. Veteran talent. That's what wins. Think about Michigan last year. Think yep. about Washington last year. Yeah. Think about what Texas is on the offensive line this year. Look yeah. at what Ohio State is across their entire roster this year. Veteran talent. That's what Texas has. You yeah. know why I think OU that doesn't is? doesn't really have that. And I think one of the reasons that is the transfer portal is – forcing teams to have to constantly rebuild cohesion and chemistry. That's right. So if you get a junior senior team with a lot of like Texas O linemen that have been together for three years, That's exactly right. You not only have the talent advantage, you have the chemistry cohesion team advantage. There is no question. What you just said is the most accurate thing that you've said in our segments in years. Well done. Get a shot of that right there. Mm -hmm. I was, that was really, I'm impressed. Because it's true. As other teams lose that the cohesiveness, shot <laughs> that chemistry, could. the margin between the teams that, that are rebuilding every single year out of the portal, like a Florida State, yeah. and the teams that can stick together. Like, look at Clemson is a great example of this. We bang on Dabo all the time. Now they got their, they've righted the ship a little bit. You betcha they have. And in fact, if you look at what they've done since Georgia, and was that good? No. No, it wasn't. That's right. They're lost to Georgia. It wasn't. But if you look at what they've done, they've grown. They've gotten better. They've developed. And now all of a sudden, they've got Garrett Riley as their offensive coordinator and Cade Klubnick. They can run the football. And all of a sudden, they're the number three scoring offense in all of college football since that loss to Georgia, scoring 48 points per game. Yeah. But, like, who wants to play them? Guess I guarantee you, you know who doesn't want to play Clemson? Miami. Let's go back to my brilliant point. <laughs> okay. So I will say this. I, I was saying it this weekend. I'm watching Mahomes Monday night. Yeah. And, man, Michael Jordan had this. He just kind of made it look easy. And I like Cam Ward a lot. But I always think he's a tad small. Same height as Shadur Sanders, and I never think about his height. Mm. I watch Cam Ward. And, first of all, Miami's good. I don't think they're great. I don't think they stack up with a couple of the top teams. But they're really good, and he's excellent. As somebody who played quarterback in college, and you do stuff on our draft coverage, mm -hmm. I know this is more NFL than college question. I think Cam's an NFL player, mm -hmm. but I felt this about Bryce Young, and I kind of feel it with Cam. I'm like, I love this, but it, it, I'm not sure it translates. What do you see? The kid's obviously talented. He was slinging it at yeah. Pullman. He's slinging it now. I never think of Shadur Sanders' size. He reminds me a little bit of Mahomes moving left, right, front, back. It just doesn't matter. Yeah. Everything's easy. His accuracy is effortless. I, my, my favorite thing about watching Cam Ward play is that he plays the position unconsciously as far as the re results go. Have you ever, like, heard a, a, a great golfer talk about, like, Jack Nicklaus has, has said, like, I never, I never missed a putt. I never, in my mind. You know, I, I would commit to it, and I would hit the putt. If it went in and, or not, like, that was beyond what was in my control. But my you, control was, like, put it on the line that I'm intending and hit a good putt. And he's, I never hit a bad putt. I always hit a good putt. That's what he would say. And and it's this idea of, like, removing yourself from the result. So, so immersing yourself in the process. And I... I that's kind of how I see Cam Ward as he plays, because there's a fearlessness with oh, which he no. drives the football down the field. No question. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so that's yeah. what I'm speaking Jumps of. Jumps off the TV. And, and so for those reasons, I've never really thought about his height. I, like, uh, to me, is the ball on time and on target? Yes. Is the arm talent there? Yes. Is he accurate down the field? Yes. Does he have a competitive spirit that allows him to make everybody else around him better? Absolutely. Look at the games that they've just won against Virginia Tech and against Cal. They're down, what, 25 against Cal? So this, this idea that his approach and his fearless nature to with, to, with which he plays the game almost removed from results. He makes throws, and I'm, and I'm holding my breath. I'm like, how do you make that throw? And he does it with such conviction. And that's what I love about watching yeah. Cam Moore. Now, does that translate? I know you kind of asked more a translation question. Well, I think question. he has no self-doubt, and that is very important in the NFL. It's but huge. It, but it is funny as I look and try to guess who's going to be the best quarterback out of uh, college. Sometimes I hit, sometimes I don't. Um, I, Shadur Sanders, more and more, I'm like, man, in my lifetime when it's just looked easy. You will remember this because you have, you have appreciation for history. <clears throat> um, remember Rod Carew? Uh, yes, okay. vaguely. I'm okay. a little younger than you, but. 
Anyway, that was a shot. But the point being, <laughs> Rod Carew made hitting look really yeah. easy. You Mike, know, the, the guy yeah. that I think of is like Edgar Martinez and Paul Molitor like the, and, and Griffey. Those were the guys that are like, when I'm watching as a kid, it was just like, well, how could how could you miss? Like, it just made, made it look easy. Mahomes did that. Okay. So let's get to USC. It, it, it could have gone either way, and there was a that. stiff seven-mile-an-hour breeze. Oh, gosh. But See, I, here's what here's. You should have just stopped with the first statement. Okay, so let me A, defend them, and then.